Hello HR leaders and business leaders. I hope you're preparing your activities for the World Mental Health Day. That's on the 10th of October. If you are, or if you're looking for ideas, my job today is to set two perspectives for you. First, whatever activities you do, they have to be easy to implement. Because let's face it, you, you're not omnipotent, you can't be omnipresent. And you have to have people doing these things for you in ways that are simple, duplicatable, and easy to understand. Not requiring a lot of paraphernalia, not requiring a lot of groundwork. Make sense? The second is that they must not be one-off activities. Because if you do something on the 10th of October or on a particular day or even in a month, that's not habit forming. So that's not sustainable. What you want is to use the day as a trigger to set in motion something for the rest of the year and for years to follow. Stuff that becomes part of building a good well-being culture in your organization. So how does that change whatever you had in mind? Does that perspective help? Let's deep dive into some things that could probably work with whatever you're thinking and help you implement stuff much more easily. How does that sound? So to make things easy, I've got an acronym for a 10 letter word, renewalism. Now renewalism is the name of a movement about renewing and raising human consciousness. It comes from a deep seated desire to have people, individuals create habits that impact the cultures of the organizations that are in sustainably, organically and help organizations become more profitable with better performers and higher team productivity. That's a story for another day, how people, purpose and process get impacted by renewalism. Today, let's deep dive into the alphabets. Why? Because they're easy to remember. Remember that was the first premise. It's got to be simple. And each of these habits you will notice is going to be habit forming. So the first habit with R is recognition. Now recognition we understand. We have R and R programs. We, we reward people for things that they do in the corporate context because it makes a difference for the organization. But have you thought of recognizing people for the things that they do at an individual level because it makes a difference to them. And if they're able to share the difference that's made, they would be able to make a difference for others in the community, in the organization, in the team, in the profit center, in the vertical, in the division. How do you do that? Well, I have a very simple idea for you. You could organize boards which are kept at the division level, at the team level. And anybody is welcome to put a post-it on the board or write a note and pin it up there, which could contain stuff that works for them. For example, a mixture of uh, matcha from Japan and yerba mate from South America is a beautiful drink, which uh, I've discovered, and it energizes anybody from a deadbeat to somebody who's totally supercharged. Now in summers especially, that's a great drink to just have in your flask. Simple recipe like that fits in about five lines on the board and who knows how many people might just adopt this. So when we have the sharing of ideas like this or stories, what we are doing is we are creating a pool of wellness and we are recognizing each person with their own handwriting or their own signature on a typesheet for their contribution to the well-being of the organization at a physical level or at a mental level, everything works on the mind eventually because the mind drives us. Mind drives our moods, moods drive our emotions, emotions drive our physical well-being. Let's move to the next one. E, E for encourage. Now I know you encourage people. It is in your grain to do that. But encourage about what? Now here's where I have a little twist for it. I would encourage positivity. You see, it's very easy to get into a negative environment. Anything, if I hold a pen here and pop, it'll drop on the ground. 
because it's effortless to move down. It takes effort to move up. And how do you move people up? You move people up through gratitude, through acknowledging them to, for whatever they do for us or for the organization or for the way they think or just for the way that they conduct themselves with such positivity. So how can we go about doing this? We could have gratitude as a section in every meeting that we conduct. You conduct a lot of meetings for sure. How about plugging gratitude in as a two minute, three minute interlude, not necessarily at the start of the meeting, but something to change the mood of the meeting. All right, we've discussed a lot of points here. Let's just take a short break and see what we like and be grateful for the person who made that contribution. Now that also promotes active listening. That also promotes uh, positive collaboration. People feel that uh, they have been heard and uh, they, their views matter. It builds self-esteem. So you are encouraging so many things without actually encouraging per se, which sometimes sounds fake. You're building a culture, a team group to encourage that sort of positivity through the tool of gratitude. How does that sound? Let's take N. N is for nourishing, nurturing. Now, what do we nourish? What do we nurture? We nurture social relationships. We nurture our interactions with each other. And how do we do that? Well, for one, let's get into a way of working where we have people knowing each other by name. I know organizations, you might find this funny, where people are working five meters away from each other for over a year and they have no idea what the other person's name is. <laughs> it happens, yeah. <laughs> there are ridiculous places like that. Now, let's say my name is Sandeep Nath. And uh, Sandeep is a very common name in India where I come from. In fact, in my section in school, we had three Sandeeps out of 40 kids. So you can imagine. Now, if that guy's name is Sandeep, and somebody calls him out, naturally, I'm going to feel uh, that people are calling me, right? I I'm going to feel, uh, was that me? And while that might, uh, might be, it disturbs me at times, but while that might be a disturbance, it'll also be a recognition that, hey, there is somebody else called Sandeep. Now we have something in common already. Let me discover what else is common to me and that person. And we just might discover that both of us like a particular game because we got talking, because we nourished that, that interaction, because we, nurtured the idea of people being talked to by name and uh, who knows where that might go so you can you can build on this and as you see all these three activities we talked about recognize um, encourage and nurture none of them require anything in particular from the outside but they are things that you can kick off as habit practices right now on the 10th of october and sustain them over time. So you could probably do little activities. You're very smart to figure out what you can do, but little activities that would bring about people to start um, progressing in their minds and ways that are, that are positive reinforcement for, hey, am I really building my relationships? Am I really interacting? with people who I don't have to interact with because that then builds my social skills in different ways that then makes sure that I have somebody outside the department to be able to talk to as well and maybe it broadens my scope and my vision of what we are out to do as a company and all of that. So a lot of hidden benefits in here. Let's move on. <laughs> the next E is for exercising. Now, this needs to be qualified. We're not talking about exercising in the gym. We're not talking about using dumbbells and all that sort of stuff. In fact, we are exercising ourselves at three levels. You know, we exist at three levels. We exist at the level of the body, the mind, 
and the spirit. So let me break down exercise in all three parts. Exercise in the body is taking breaks just to make sure that we interrupt a pattern. Many of us have these sedentary lives. We just sitting and the movement is very limited. So taking a break just to stand up, just to stretch, just to bend, maybe kick about, maybe twist about, breaks a pattern of that sedentariness. And it wakes up our muscles, it wakes up our uh, entire internal system, the physical body, to be able to breathe better and work better, get more flexible, stop being sore. At a mental level, the mind. This is interesting. How do you exercise the mind? It's not really through crosswords and uh, pushing it uh, in, in wild ways. This may surprise you, but what all those mental juggleries do, those logical puzzles and strategic uh, ideation and critical thinking, what they do is they stretch and then the mind comes back. What's important, if you notice how nature works, is that when you stretch, you keep a pause and then you return. If you take, for example, uh, the waves of an ocean, they will come in, there will be a pause, and then they will regress. What makes the wave identifiable is the pause. Otherwise, it's just water sloshing around. Make sense? Imagine it. So, what we want to do with the mind is make it still. Give it that little pause, maybe every hour or at the end of every project. In our days, we do various things. So when we finish something, we take a pause, we take a break and observe that stillness. And how do you observe the stillness? By, again, a pattern interrupt. You can do the third thing for the spirit, which is breathing. You see, when we breathe, there is a certain when you breathe consciously, there is always a certain calmness that comes, a certain relaxation, a certain lightness. Because our spirit, our energy gets pacified. The word pacification itself refers to this. And if we take those breaks every hour, let's say, or after every project, to breathe three times, and that's an exercise, by the clock, it becomes a habit eventually and it brings both our spirit, our energy and our minds in unison at a level which is relaxed, which is more base, where we've finished with the wave and it's going back to the other side and then we'll come back after a little pause. So that's the exercise at the body, mind, spirit level. Give it a shot. And while you're giving it a shot, remember W. Now W is for walking the talk. Walking the talk means being in integrity. Being in integrity of what? Being in integrity of the body, mind and spirit once again. Now you might wonder how is that? You see, the mind is what we say. We think a lot of things but what comes to the tongue is finally where the mind is being directed. So, what you say is got to be in consonance with what you do. Because what you do is what the body does. Physically, that's what we do. It's got to be in consonance with how we feel. Because feeling is internal. That's how our spirit is driven. And that's how we are, as human beings, we be that, right? Our being is our energy, which drives us. So if our spirits are low, our energy is down, we don't feel like doing things, and we start thinking depressive thoughts. When our saying, doing, and being, the say, do, be, are in harmony, we are walking the talk, we are operating with the least possible stress 
because everything is in unison. Now imagine a situation where you're saying that I will uh, get this done by four o'clock today. But what you're doing is something on another project. Now the stress is starting to develop because you have given your word and you're not going to keep it. And if you have integrity as a person, that could be very, very damaging to you because your saying is different from your doing. Similarly, if let's say you are asked to do something which is against your personal values, which is against your conscience, then your conscience is going to oppose your doing that and there's going to be stress. So bringing the saying, doing and being in harmony is walking the talk, which is also bringing the body, mind and spirit in harmony. And that is critical. Making sense? Let's move to A, which is about assimilating. And let's again do A at three levels. Physically, we want to assimilate what we eat because that's what gives us energy, right? The only way we take in stuff is what we breathe and what we eat. We just talked about breathing now let's understand that our, our body systems are working because of what we eat. And to assimilate that means to eat stuff that is easy to assimilate, to chew it well, to not have non-natural products, not have a lot of processed stuff because that then puts a strain on our internal systems. And all the energy that you're eating for gets dissipated in digesting the thing. So it's going waste. Assimilate at the level of the body by eating right. Assimilate at the level of mind by not multitasking, by not keeping open loops. I start with this, then I do that, then I do that, then I, by the time, you see this thing that's left open is still weighing on the mind. And you don't recognize it as, as a pressure on the mind, but your subconscious mind does. And that's the problem. You keep increasing the weight upon your own self which is counterproductive, self-defeating. So no open loops, no multitasking. Make sure that you assimilate your work mentally. And to assimilate energetically is to bring the body, mind and spirit in unison by habit. And you can do that by adopting the Qigong habit. Qigong is a Taoist practice. Again, not the forum to get into that, but you're most welcome to contact me through renewalism.com or through sandeepnath.com and uh, write to me about Qigong. Uh, you could read a little about it at sandeepnath.com. It's a practice that helps us make a habit of bringing body, mind and spirit in one oneness, in alignment. And when you develop that habit, it applies everywhere. So that brings your energy, in, uh, assimilates your energy. Let's move to L. L is for listening. You see, the feedback that you get and the way you work on it makes you better. That's the Kaizen approach of Japanese, uh, it's a Japanese word meaning continuous improvement coming from insights that you've got from the people that you are there to serve. Are you listening? And as an organization, you could set up these things on a quarterly basis. So, you know, now we have seven activities with the body, mind, spirit of three of them. So that's uh, 11 activities, which you could do a focus month for each one of them by converting these, these ideas, these thoughts, which uh, become habits, are sustainable, into things that can be activated for the entire uh, team. And... Uh, Every month you have one of these and you could do more of listening in different months. Like I was saying, every quarter you could have a Q&A, an open house to listen to what people in the organization feel about what you're doing. Get more feedback, make more improvements. And that's renewal, which incidentally is the name of the book I wrote, which is the basis of the renewalism movement. So the ISM are more back office like. I is I would urge you to create an Intel hub where things like the boards that we had, which we were recognizing people, they were writing stuff, they can, the boards can be in the hub. It's kind of a library on your intranet, which people can access so that things are not forgotten. Good things that you do for mental health and well-being are always available to everybody. S 
you're probably already doing this, to have a safe space, to have a team of counselors, to have people who you can fall back on to advise you, to mentor you and make progress on the fly. And M is to measure because what can be measured can be controlled and you want to make significant changes by the 10th of October next year. So unless you're doing your assessments now, for which again we can have a one-to-one -one dialogue, we have assessments in the eight dimensions of wellness, which are, uh, you know, it's like body, mind and spirit, the physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, uh, those four dimensions, as well as occupational, financial, social and um, environmental. How are our people doing on each one of these things today? How are they doing six months later? How are they doing 12 months later? When we can measure this, we know where they're going and we take them with us. So on that note, let me wish you a very, very happy World Mental Health Day and let's talk.